Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, today was going to be, today's video was going to be, I was going to share you with something that I had built. A piece of furniture that I had actually built. I'm no carpenter, more of a mechanic. Uh, it was going to be about this, but it turned out to be about something completely different. Today we got some tools out, and more tools out, and more tools out. And I'm actually going to dig into this uh, engine cover a little bit. Some of you that follow us on Patreon have already seen this cabinet. Uh, I'm going to show you more about this at a later time, what all is going on with that. We're going to refinish it. Uh, that's going to have to wait uh, for another time. That might be all you ever see of it. <laughs> um, this uh, engine cover, we need to get under here. It's just uh, one of the things we're putting off. I have found uh, this new thingy, uh, this gizmo thingy. Here's the old one. It, uh, it, it's a temperature switch, really. Uh, it had a different connector on the end of it. This one was bad. And uh, the connector doesn't matter. It uh, uh, has uh, that connector on it. And a spade connect pipe connector. And that's gonna, we're just going to switch the end of the wire. Just going to take off that other type of connector. Uh, fancy connector that was on this. They both do the same thing. So it's important. The right thread size and... Uh, this controls the electric fans for the radiator and it uh, turns on at 185 185 degrees and then once it's done it's uh, the fans have done their job and it cools the engine down some to about 175 they shut back off and uh, so it's a temperature it's a temperature activated switch so in uh, this piece goes in the upper radiator hose uh, I didn't put it back in you know I recently had done some uh, worked in here, put a new water pump in it, and uh, some new belts, and a uh, new uh, uh, upper and lower radiator hose, and uh, I, I really maybe should have just put it in at that time. Uh, what it requires is, let, let me go ahead and get this off for a second. Okay, it's off, uh, but what, while I'm thinking of that engine cover, let me add something here. I just bought something new for it, and part of the reason why this is noisy if you watch past videos you know where this is missing the fan clutch they put a solid spacer in there it's fully engaged all the time there's no uh, we'll get to that project as soon as i find that fan i'm still keeping an eye out for it and i've been looking particularly hard but um it's on the list i i will get that when i find it so about this engine cover this uh it's made out of fiberglass okay fiberglass uh just uh, fiberglass <laughs> and and they, this one section they have, you can tell where this, this has been partly painted. Now, whether that's factory or somebody did that at some point, I don't know. But this is kind of factory. They put this insulation, uh, and and really it's nothing left but the foil backing. Any of the insulation is gone. Now there's a little trace of it there, but you know, over 35 years time. Whether it was just uh, so many heat cycles, it just uh, deteriorated, or uh, maybe uh, some rodent uh, action or something. You can see here it's been patched uh, with uh, aluminum tape. It's actually truly the real type of duct tape. It's not for uh, for ducks. Not not what we think of as duct tape. Anyway, never mind that. But they only did this insulation on this one area. And what I've done is I've ordered um, a mat that will cover all this entire thing. This is roughly three feet by three feet. I found a piece that was 40 some inches uh, both ways, 40 or 42 each way. And I'm going to cover, uh, it might cover every bit of this, but it's a sound deadening. Uh, it's heat resistant and sound deadening. So this, uh, and they attached this with some, I think they stapled some, I don't know what they use. It's not a furring strip. It's almost like that's was leftover paneling or <laughs> something, these strips. But I'll pull these strips off of here and uh, get this cleaning up. Brush off any loose stuff that might be on it. The, the sound deadening mat is uh, self-adhesive on one side. So we're going to get this fitted, get this old stuff all cleaned off. Get this clean and get that sound deadening mat installed on this. Anyway, back to the engine thing. This top radiator hose, where this goes, it goes, it goes up and then it heads over a section and then up to the top of the radiator. Well, the section up there that goes across, and it won't be too hard to get to. It's, it's, it's right, it's right, it's right here. 
I just have to cut. I'll have to get, take that label off of there. I might, might not have to, but I'll just have to cut it here and then uh, put it in and put the two hose clamps on that. And then the wires come down through this little opening right here and plug that in. So that's not going to be uh, too hard. I've already drained the in, and saved the antifreeze out of the out of it so i can cut that and not have to worry about antifreeze uh, going all over the place and making a mess and it's new antifreeze from doing the water pump job so i want to save it and, and put it back in there and something else i didn't catch maybe i should have done it at the time uh, but i keep in mind i knew i'm going to be back in here for uh, a number of jobs one of them is the exhaust manifolds and all that but i should have put the new uh I didn't catch this. Uh, this water, this uh, thermostat housing actually seeps a little bit. So I should have at least put a new gasket in there. And um, the thermostat still works. And uh, maybe it'd be a good idea to put a new thermostat uh, and gasket in there both while I'm doing this. But this one works. And I've kind of lost faith in the quality of parts you buy nowadays. You know, they're all made overseas and some are quality and some are not and it's a roll of the dice sometimes i'd hate to buy put a brand new thermostat in there and you know run for a, a day or a week or a month and all of a sudden it starts sticking and they're known to do that so do i take <laughs> and put a possibly cheap cheaper made one in i mean i bought it i have as it is i might just keep it as a spare this one has a proven track record it works so I might just put a new gasket in there, you know, clean the old gasket off there, put sealer on it and a new gasket and keep using that old thermostat. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be a last minute decision. Should I or shouldn't I put that in there? And I'll just, I'll do it and put the bolts in it and be done and live with my decision for now. <laughs> so it's not a big deal that I have to break into the system anyway. Uh, why was that? Uh, oh, because I didn't have that, uh, well, by the time I found out that switch was bad, okay, let me put these here. Uh, I realized that even if I installed this at the time, uh, I still would have to take the switch out and antifreeze would have come out. You know, I could have probably hurried up and taken it out and held my thumb over it, <laughs> okay. Uh, try to put some tough on tape. I could have had it already ready to go ahead and put tough on tape on a new one and Hurry up, took my thumb off and tried to screw it in. I still would have made a big mess, so I, I kind of knew I had to uh, uh, drain the antifreeze out of it just to, so, so I'd lose less and not make a big mess. So, um, anyway, I couldn't find one at the time. I did find this online and, and ordered it, so I'm going to do that at this time. And, uh, yeah, I'll get it done. Then there's a whole other mess going on with this system. This system was disabled anyway, and it's only my guess that when this went bad, maybe they couldn't figure out what component in the system because there's a relay involved and some other wiring that goes up front. Uh, let's go up front. Now, this is a bit of a mess in its own. There's a couple of things going on here, and I know, uh, like I said, this could be an ongoing project. I know this is going to be uh, sorting things out one system at a time. And uh, here's that special connector that went on that um, old switch. So I'm just going to cut that off and put on a spade terminal to go on the new one. So, you know, that goes up through that hole and connects to that. That's fine. Okay, that's easy enough. And the other one, here's the other one. All right, it's, uh, there's a spade terminal. Uh, that's good. So that will also go up there. So there's my two wires for that. Now, what happened was they cut somewhere... They cut into that system. I have to follow this uh, wiring harness that those come out of back here somewhere because they cut into this, the electric fan system. And what they did was they ran these wires up and over and way back up and through there, through the dashboard to a toggle switch. So <laughs> they figured uh, maybe they couldn't figure out what was... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, sometimes you just have to guess what's going on. But, um, we'll get this sorted out and get these fans, get the original connection made. Get, um, dig this, all these red wires that were added on and clean some of this rat's nest up and get that system hooked back up the way it's supposed to. And, uh, it should run. 
because uh, I did test that old switch. I put it in a pan of boiling water with a, uh, um, a thermometer. And when I got the 75, or up the 175, and then 185, and 195, all the way up to the boiling point, that's, and then I, I was testing it with an ohm meter to see if I, it made continuity, and it never did. So uh, that, uh, that switch had failed for sure. I didn't bother testing the new one. I'm just going to assume it works. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so there's a little bit going on here too, but at least if I... Uh, I thought I would just want to get this done today. I might work, uh, work on. I might work on this later or tomorrow. This will be next. I thought I want to get that uh, all back together so uh, I can uh, get the uh, coolant, you know, dump back into the radiator and get that all uh, the coolant system part of it uh, sealed back up and refilled. Because um, as it stands right now, you know, it is a cooler time of the year, so uh, the the need really hasn't been there. The engine's cooling adequately. Uh, you know, it, it was, but it, had it been hotter days or we're out climbing big mountains, which uh, we're not, this is relatively flat land uh, that we're in. You know, there's a few little hills around here and there, but um, it's not like the highway goes up and over them. Uh, the highways and roads around here are relatively flat. So, um, you know, it's not like we're out hill climbing on hot days or towing a car or anything that's really making the making it work hard to, to get hotter so just kind of light duty towing itself around and this time of year uh the the one fan on the inside is getting the job done so um but i want to get these working right because we you know when summer rolls around and it gets hotter and maybe we are out hill climbing in a different area i need these to be operational doing their job when the when the extra heat dissipation is needed i think i can just cut into that radiator hose i'll just try to do it nice and neatly with a utility knife and uh, insert that piece and put the hose clamps on it and uh, get that one uh, terminal end uh changed out i'll get my little wiring kit here somewhere bella is back there she says i'm just gonna watch i'm just gonna observe today i'm not gonna bother helping you yeah, uh, you got this under control. I'll just pay attention. Just let me know if you need anything. I'll hand it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me just scar that label. Where's this thing gonna go anyway? It's gonna sit in right about, right about here. <laughs> so, I don't think that label's gonna affect anything. Well, how easy if it just come right off would be nice. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to be a hose clamp on top of it. It's not going to affect anything more. Well, part of it come off easy. I just scored it very lightly with a utility knife. Mm -hmm. Really careful not to actually cut the hose in that direction. That would be bad. Oh, we'll see here. Where am I going to cut it at? Cut it. Just cut it. Right about... Right about just to the left or to the right of that sticker. I'm gonna be clamped there. A, I think that's where I want to go. Is right there. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'll take that brand new hose. But isn't that a feeling to you know, be cutting your brand new radiator hose in half? Yeah. Hmm. All right, this camera's kind of in my way. So I'm going to move you for a minute and come right back, I think. I think. All right, got it caught. And I took it. Actually, I thought, why not make this easier? Since I got to take the thermostat thing off anyways. Go ahead and, oops, wait, I'll get this twisted around here. Um, I'm just take this one end off and uh, Make it easier to pull this whole thing out a little bit and get it cut. I am not taking that other end off up there because that was a <laughs> that was that was really really hard to get to access to that clamp up there. It was really hard to get that old one, the old clamp off when I did the water pump and put new hoses on it because um, the clamp itself was messed up and ac uh, access was terrible. I had to get I actually got a super long <laughs> extension up from the all the way at the bottom. It was just crimped in this weird 
it's a weird angle so um, in a weird little spot so I tried to put that new clamp in in a more easier to access uh, angle if you needed ever need to get to it but even at that it's still really uh, kind of difficult so I don't ever want to do that again if I don't have to anyway we got it done without doing that uh, we're gonna put this piece in here <laughs> where is it all right we got uh, our two hose clamps ready and I think we're gonna put them on uh, I think I can put them up this way with the uh, with uh, the uh, screw the nut facing hanging down here just easy access straight through them right here instead of trying to you know, get up in here and the, the interference with anything it's just um, I think either either way it should be pretty easy here but <laughs> now I probably could put some kind of sealer on that but you know what I cleaned these up with a scotch bright brand new has brand new clamp I think it's gonna seal just fine never used sealers in the past I've had the good luck with them if I remember right the old one that's about how it was situated it was the uh I think kind of face we can face it up some let's, let's face it up some yeah i think it's more like that there's the one connector and then the, there's the other connector i'll bring the wires through up uh, from through there and just bang bang and uh, this part of it's going to be done so that's uh it's gonna, <laughs> not a bad job now What's this? What's that? Right. All right. Where's the bar at? The swell part this way up here, as long as the clamp is behind that. Uh, I think I got that position quite right. Try that a little bit. All right. Oh, these clamps are actually a size bigger than they need to be. And all this excess hanging here, but it's not going to be in the way of anything. That'll be fine. What about this other one? Let's get this one here. Let's get it close. Wait a minute. Let's do this. Hey, let's put some light on the subject. That's a little better, huh? Let's get it in the ballpark. Almost snug. We can still move it a little bit if we need to. Where's that bar about on this one? Yeah, it's right about here. Let's split the difference about. Right about there looks good. I like that. What do you think? Is that looking pretty good there? Look pretty good to everybody out there. You can probably see better than I can. <laughs> Alright, that's that one wants to kick. I need to hold that one right there as I tighten it. Hang on, let me get this thing out. Ooh, big gat. Bella, can you hold this please? <laughs> Uh, really, when you get close, it's just easier to uh, maybe just keep a can go go to the nut driver type. I can just see and hold that as I go a little bit better. It's looking a little straighter. My uh, the the cut it might look real good, but um, you know the cut with a utility knife. You know my OCD is struggling right now, but uh, <laughs> I would like to cut that perfect, of course. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Is that, let's get just right. It's more important that that clamp is properly placed in relation to that swollen area, that, that barb on that, than it is the. Uh, yeah, and the, the hose is pressed up. It goes all the way up to this uh, part of this housing, which is square. Here where the uh, where uh, actually it's a hex to put a wrench on. 
on the, on the body of this and then that hex so it's it's all the way up against us yeah all right this one here it's looking pretty good oops i'm gonna watch i don't bump the camera you'll I guess it'll fall down the side of the engine and get stuck in one of the exhaust manifolds or spark plug wires or possibly fall all the way to the ground and really get hurt and dirty. Well, that to happen to you guys. All right. Uh, so there went the nut driver off the end of this. Of course, something had to fall. Things were going just too well. I wonder if it fell all the way to the ground or if it got stuck somewhere. Hello. Hello. Did you, are you down there somewhere? Did you fall down to the ground? Ooh. Come on, everybody, move your heads out of the way. I'm the one that's going to see down there. <laughs> All right, uh, luckily it did fall the whole way through. I went outside and there it was laying uh, underneath. It was easy enough. It, uh, fortunately, it didn't get stuck on some component that made it more difficult to find. Here is uh, some information here. I, I hope what I'm looking for is on here. Might have to find it online somewhere. I wonder what the uh, specification is for... Ooh, look at that little diagram of how the old original uh, vacuum system it's uh not here anymore it used to run look at that look at that rat's nester looks like the map of a subway system doesn't it all right what are we looking at a oh, good timing ah oh, there it is ah oh, there's the information i need uh, i got some uh tune-up things coming here's what's frustrating is i already own the tune-up stuff uh equipment the diagnostic the engine and the uh yeah, the engine analyzer for adjusting the RPM, the uh, the idle speed, and the air fuel mixture, and the uh, you know, sort of stuff you can do by ear and get it. Uh, if you've been at it a while, you can kind of get it dialed in fairly close. But in uh, the timing, and you know, really getting that stuff dialed into where it should be accurately, and kind of put it at its best, and not just kind of guessing it in. Um, uh, I own a timing light, and I own a a dwell meter uh, well i don't need a dwell meter it's uh this is electronic ignition but it does have the rpm uh the tachometer feature of that too so um yeah i already own that equipment <laughs> but it's back in pennsylvania in the garage uh, i really want to get this dialed in it certainly runs better i've, I've, I've kind of got it ballpark but i'm not happy with it it's, it has a symptom or two to you know maybe i've lost my ear for it you know <laughs> I could be I could be getting deaf I could be getting old age you know oh I'll be 60 <gasps> I'll be 60 on the 16th born December 16th 1962 <laughs> oh anyway um <laughs> that meetup thing uh I mentioned in a video or two ago if you're still watching uh if you want to know about it you better be still watching i'm going to i think i'm shooting for just after i'm going to hang out here i think with my friends for a little bit we might go get tacos or something for my birthday i don't know it's what we did last year it was fun i enjoyed it um so i might hang out here for my birthday and then i think the 17th the day after the 17th i think i'm going to head up to the uh la posa south in quartzite that's the ltva la posa south probably on the 17th might go up there and get settled and do a couple of personal things uh you know, take care of the rig the tank thing and all that get set up and then the 18th i'm gonna at least set aside the 18th uh late morning you know all afternoon i hang out and visit and anybody wants to stop by and uh chat it up for a while bring their own chair <laughs> if you want to hang out for a little while uh, i'm not making any promises once it gets dark out I get my afternoon in, morning and afternoon in, and uh, I kind of get ready for, uh, I'm not one to sit out, uh, especially if it's a cool night, I'm not one to sit out in the evening too much. I know, I'm a party pooper. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm all about the, the mornings, all afternoon, when the sun's out and it's nice, but uh, it starts getting dinner time. I like to eat and uh, kind of come in and 
Uh, take care of some things, make some TV going after dinner and clean up. And I, the evening is up in the air. I, I'm going to play it by ear. I have no promises for the evening. Sometimes I like to sit out. Many times I don't. So no promises there. All right. Here. All right. Where was we on this anyway? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back to information. Oh, so what I do, I ordered. <laughs> okay, for like 70 bucks, a new engine analyzer and timing light. But you know what? Having this thing tuned up properly now, that stuff could pay for itself in gasoline savings. So um, that's what I was looking for. Four degrees. Um, obviously, you uh, warm it up for that second uh, thing. Uh, this thing isn't, isn't focusing very well, is it? I wonder if my lens is dirty. Uh, the second thing down here. Four degrees at 700 RPMs. Idle speed screw. Uh, they want this to idle at 700 RPMs is normal idle speed. Uh, the fast idle screw, uh, like when it's cold warming up, 1900, is that right? Spark plug gap at 45 thousandths. Valve lash, uh, that's hydraulic. Uh, cam and lifter, so that's all taken care of. That's really the basic information I needed. Four degrees at 700. And uh, 700 is the uh, normal warmed up idle speed too. So I'm going to get that all dialed in because uh, I know I need to tweak this just a little bit. A little bit. I'm playing with it. It's not bad, but I, I want to put it where it's right, 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 right where it's supposed to be. And uh, get the idle speed uh, correct. I know it's idling a little, a little slow. I could crank it up, but um, it doesn't stall out or anything. But, but then again, I'm, I'm guessing. I don't have the correct uh, equipment here to set it properly and accurately. Anyway. I want to take this off because uh, it's going to be easier to get up to the thermostat housing. I'm going to do that. Let's, uh, let's put that there. And then uh, let's put... Uh, let's, uh, what else is hooked up to this? Anything? I guess this one hose over here. I should have just put the... Uh, oh, in this big thing. The big snorkel. Uh, the, cool, the cold air intake goes up to the front. You call it fresh air. Well, it's just a fresh air intake. It's only colder intake if it's, uh, if it's cold outside. <sighs> All right, I need two hands. There we go. Now it's off as a whole. And and there's that. And there's that big beautiful carburetor. Whoa! Boom! Boom! It's an awesome carburetor. A lot of people just uh have had have had problems with uh quadrajet carburetors and they call them names like quadra junk and that sort of thing and, uh, people have said in earlier videos of uh, get rid of that old thing and get yourself a good holly or an elder brock carburetor and get rid of that old quadra junk well you know what we tend to bad mouth things that we've had trouble with i've had several holly carburetors and um i've never had one operate uh, I was not, properly, at least not for long. I've always had to mess with hollies, and they just never seem to uh, never seem to be quite right. I was kind of fiddling with them and stuff. Um, I've had a couple quadra jets, and I've never had a problem with quadra jet. So the opposite is true with me. I tend to say hollies are junk, and quadra jets are good. <laughs> we tend to stick with what has worked well for us. So um, this is, you know. Well, ever since I unleashed that, what somebody had done to it, somebody had wired that, um, <laughs> they disabled the secondary, they wired that shut, thinking, oh, maybe it'll save on gas. That's an old, that's an old timer's trick. You know, wire the choke wide open, so it's hard to start when it's cold, and, and wire the secondaries uh, shut, so it doesn't have much power, and that's <laughs> No, choke should work properly, and the secondary should work properly, so when you need power, you have it. So, I mean, once I unleashed that, uh, what somebody had meddled, was meddling around, thinking they had a better idea. Once I get rid of that, it's worked, it's worked beautifully. It has worked beautifully. No, I'm not going to, I wouldn't dare disturb this with some other inferior product. <laughs> All right, so, um, now you got this thing. We're going to, we're going to get this, uh, that's it there. That's where the hose goes on. And there's, uh. And there's a bolt there and another bolt over here in the dark that you can't see. Where is it? Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, it has been seeping in a freeze. 
And uh, there's the other bolt. So we're gonna take those two bolts off. There's a thermostat down in there. There it is. Where is it? Where is it? We can see. We can kind of see it. Where is it? Uh, anyway, hang on. Let me get. Let me get my stuff out. So did I bury it under this bench? What's in here? Oh, duct tape. Emergency duct tape. And uh, mm, stuff. No, 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 no. What's that? Oh no, those are. That's where I hid the brand new exhaust manifolds. That and I'll get around to that job one of these days, but I have them when I'm ready. I bet there. I bet there. I bet there. Under this one. Oh shit! Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hey, look, Christmas. Um, Christmas garland. Oh, can I show you my Christmas tree? Da, da, da. Well, it's uh, a fiber optic. It's not very impressive in the daytime when the lights are off, but you know, nighttime it looks beautiful. All right, where's that stuff? Oh, hey, there's my jigsaw. That we're not going to jigsaw it off. Wait a minute. Oh, that's that nice heavy duty power strip. Oh, wait, that's not the heavy duty one. All right, we got some extension cords. Oh, look, Ooh, a 10 pound dumbbell. Oh, more extension. Oh, I think we're getting close. We're getting close. Donut gasket. Where is it? What's that thing? Oh, the terminal lens. Where did I put it? Oh, maybe it's over on the other side after all. Wait a minute. Do I have a pair of them somewhere? Um, I don't really need them, but I like them. Uh, let's try this one more little box. What's in there? No, not there. Hang on. I think I got, oh, I'm just so blind. It was right here. It's the thermostat. It's a 185 degree I asked for. Does it say on here? But I think I am going to use this as a spare. I, don't know, I still have to still make up my mind at the last minute and somewhere back here I'm hiding. Ooh, the new gasket. And ooh, a little bit of water pump and thermostat housing gasket maker. I really preferred uh, number two Permatex, but I don't even know if they make number two Permatex anymore. I couldn't find it, but this is a Permatex product. I'm gonna trust that it'll work. But at least. Wait, look, wait, look, we got some colors that match, so it must mean it's made to work with each, well, together with each other. They're color-coded, right? Is that going to matter? Oh, I hate when I do that. I, I tear something all apart. Ugh, and it wasn't there. And then I remember, oh, no, it's not in here. So then I got to put it all together somewhat neatly. So when I get in here next time, I'm like, who was in here and made this mess? It was probably me this up in here where it goes and put this across here neatly and then pretend that I don't see that other mess. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep this handy. It could end up going in. It could. We're gonna have a close look at that old one and but, uh, but again I know it works. Alright, what am I gonna need here? I'm gonna need a gasket scraper. And, uh, or, uh, while I'm right here, there's my gasket scraper. Actually, I don't have a gasket scraper. I have, it's actually a wood chisel, which I know any of you uh, um, carpenters out there is probably cringing right now. Saying that is not a gasket scraper. It works really, really, really good as a gasket scraper. But, uh, it's uh, not meant for that. <laughs> right, so, um, I know my dad would cringe. He did a lot of woodworking. He'd say, don't mess up that perfect edge of that fine wood chisel. And I go hacking on metal and scraping gaskets off and nicking it all up. And he just, he'd probably smack me. <laughs> all right, all right. So I think I'm gonna need a, some 9 16th stuff. Me, uh, where's that stuff at? Where is my other, where? Oh, it's up here. We are gonna need it's kind of dark up here for me it is but can you guys see what's going on up here which one is it i'm actually looking at the camera because it's a little bit 
I'm going to put right back to 9 16ths. And uh, let's get a, uh, get an extension. No, let's get the longer one. Let's get your ratchet. Okay. I see in my, uh, that suddenly comes with a, uh, a three inch extension. And I like the idea of a uh, six inch extension. Actually, we could put the two together. Have even more reach. Hmm. There, now we got a nine inch extension. Huh? Pretty sweet, right? Do that. It's a little softy poo on the end there. Oh, you are ready. What we need here is, uh, let's, uh, let's put this one here first. Uh, Lefty Lucy. Just loosen that a little bit. Loosen that one a little bit. All right, and, and then, uh, here, here well, let's get that other tool out. I, I, here's this other tool. It's one of my favorite tools. We just go, uh, we really didn't need this uh, three inch one at all. <laughs> it was a little bit of a kill. Let's get this guy. Ba -ba -ba. That's so awesome. This, I just, I just can't say enough about that tool. I really love it. All right, let's uh. Boy, I'm thinking that I need a wire brush. I need a wire wheel. That's going on my list. This is a couple of times I could have used it. I'll have to dig that out the old fashioned way somehow. And threads really should be all cleaned out nicely before putting this back together. So they're properly tightened, properly torqued. I should be able to just grab this now. Oh. Huh? Huh. Be stubborn, are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me grab it up here. Yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, stop. Here, trick. You gotta be a little screwdriver or something. Stick in there. There we go. Or a wood chisel or something. Yep. Give it a little tug. Just need a little, need a little, uh, little leverage on that. I wish I had a plug. I'd like to take that out. I just got a different thermostat housing all together. <laughs> we won't go there. I did. Got a chrome on it. Just never mind. We'll just, I'm not going to tell that story. Even if I had a plug and took this out, get rid of that old vacuum thing that's not needed anymore. Just plug that. So, what's that? Ooh. I should look carefully on there. Probably would have been able to see the, uh, the void where it was seeping at. It could have been right there. A little dark area there. Oh, what the heck? What kind of stuff did they use on this? I'm not a fan of silicone. I am not a fan of silicone. Less and less. Every job I do, I grow less fond of silicone. Alright. It's not gonna be too hard to that's not gonna be too hard to finish cleaning up. Cause uh ninety percent of the gasket all came off already and uh let's have a look down here in a little bit. Ooh, that came out. Nice. That's a maybe we will change this because that's a 195. That says 195 on there. So we're gonna put the 185 in it. The truth of the matter is, although it does say made in USA on it, <laughs> Ooh, decisions, decisions, I wonder what the other one says. The price is 185 and made in China. Oh, well, we'll see. I don't know, I'm seeing some different languages here. Thermostato de Calidad Premium. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do the job right, don't forget antifreeze and clamps and hoses. I right, right, right. Thermostato de Calidad Premium. Not just original equipment design. What kind of language is that anyway? Uh, instruction or instructions. Is that how I say that? Is it pronounced? I butchered every other word. 
I think that says instructions. Instructions? Whatever, whatever, whatever. So it doesn't say country of origin. Or does it? Hey, wait a minute. It's made in Israel. I don't know if that's good or bad. Every country uh, has its line of good stuff and its line of bad stuff and everything in between. Let's hope they, uh, this is a quality line. What's it going to say? What's it going to say on there? Probably in Celsius anyway. <laughs> yep, 82, 82 degrees Celsius. Does that sound right? Oh, and it says 180 Fahrenheit. I thought it was a 185. Is that a 180F? Can you see? It's, hmm. Doesn't say. I don't see any thing where it says made in. Like the other one said made in USA. It says no made in information. Just what was on the box. But, you know, that can be repackaged anywhere. That can be changed on the, the box. But it says it was made in Israel. So we're just going to go with that. Uh, Let's just go ahead and do it and keep our fingers crossed that this will never give us any, any problems down, on down the road. All right, so I have a little bit of cleanup work here to do. Let me go around here and get this good and good and clean. And this is, anytime you do something like this with a gasket that's involved, you really, really need to make sure you get, it is worth every minute spend to be ultra mega supremely uh the, the, every last little trace of gasket or oil or you know uh, is off of there uh, if you get a little piece of gasket old gasket on there that you kind of missed it looks like, like it was clean and check and check twice and check eighteen thousand times go over it and over it just make sure you have not missed anything and i've gone over here with uh Especially with a gasket scraper or razor blade scrapers also work pretty good. Uh, they can, depends. And uh, go over it with a, some cleaner and some Scotch Brite and wipe it off and examine it really good. And then, you know, it seems like there's always that place that you just didn't, dang it, you just didn't see. And as you say, if you, well, if I miss that, then I must. Yeah, I missed some over here too. And you, it just, you know, when you cut it and you put this much work. And oftentimes money in parts. It's just, it's just, it really stinks if you miss something and you end up with a leak. Now this little recess in the center, see that little, little recess? Which is actually what the thermostat sits in. And properly locates it. It's kind of screwed up. So um, there's a, okay, so there's an initial cleaning. Hang on a minute. Just a minute. Need a paper towel. Uh, Bella, can you hand me the paper towels? No, I don't have any shop, good shop rags or anything in here. Uh, you know, you could use, uh, you, know, you could mix it up a little bit between things. You could scrape it and you could probably get a piece of little uh, sandy paper or scotch bright or, uh, or uh, I don't think I still wool or I don't know. Just do what you gotta do to make sure it's a clean and dry surface. That was like a couple holes that maybe weren't used for something. I wonder what that hole is for. Ugh. Yeah, there's nothing pointy there. Um, that's like an unused hole right there. Uh, this one we definitely need, and this one we definitely need back here, probably just out of view. I wonder if those are threaded holes that you could have you could have pointed the for maybe uh, whether it was in a truck or a car, maybe that it was a different radiator. Maybe you could put the housing. Where's the housing? Oh, wait a minute. Could be, could be onto something here. What do I do with it? Oh, here it is. You know what I mean? You can put it on like that way, or you could put it on this way. If it, if it had a, if the radiator had a, um, maybe uh, the hose would be at the top right instead of the top left. Could be a different configuration with uh, where the alternator is and the air conditioning, all the stuff is. Maybe this is like olden days before they had to put their smog pump here. <laughs> they said, we need, to, we need to make room for the smog pump that is here, so let's run it over this way. And they, they added two, uh, two holes that you could do it uh, either way. So, interesting. But I'm not going to clean those up. There's no point in cleaning those two holes up because we're not going to use them anyway. We're going to use the, the holes that 
were in it and they were being used. So, uh, Scotch Bright, yeah, generic, which had some good, uh, you know, red stuff. But I'm gonna put some cleaner and we're gonna go around and scrubby, scrubby and wipey, wipey and uh, get this all, make sure it's all clean all the way around. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna need you guys to move out of my way. And so. I was just thinking how nice it would be um, to be back in the garage and have to uh, put this in my blast cabinet and just go around and blast this gently. And because uh, it's all discolored, it's, it's aluminum, been around a while, a lot of heat cycles. Uh, but I do have all the, I guess you could probably see the shine to it the whole way around. I do have all the uh, old gasket and junk off of there a bit. Uh, sometimes it's nice to hit that just it makes it a uniform color and you, you just and uh until it's nice as you can kind of lap that in a little bit too you sometimes get warped not that it's the end of the world they are a little bit that's what the gaskets in us gasket sealers for is to account for a little bit of uh, poor surface area warped or pits that sort of thing uh, but then um yeah these can be put on a, uh, like a lapping plate some of you might know what that is nice precision plate piece of sand you know medium to fine sandpaper face up and kind of move it this way and rotate you know, there's a process to lapping so making something flat again and in the shinier marks will uh will show up the high spots but yeah you know, we don't have all the luxuries of the uh, the garage here so um uh, it's all right uh I'm, I'm satisfied it's clean i know i got all this stuff off there i know we're down to metal it just has some little dingy looking now, these bolts, boy, it'd be nice to just walk over to the bench grinder, to the wire wheel, and run these around on there and clean them, all the goop out of those threads, but we have a, we don't have a bench grinder, but we have something else. My Dremel set, let it be here, let it, of all the little attachments come with these sets, little cut off wheels and polishing wheels and grinding wheels i just ha ah, there it is i just need the little wire wheel wheel <laughs> we'll get her done uh, okay we're gonna use that little wire wheel there to you know, there's just two it's not like we have a bunch of them to do we just got these two to you know, clean them threads out so they screw down in properly and not getting hung up on old debris all right, we uh, plugged into the uh, inverter over there. Not enough, our good old lithium batteries. Should be able to handle a small little dremel dremel. Do this outside here a little bit so we uh, at least on the steps because I can sweep these out easier. Yeah, look at how nasty, look how nasty them threads are. It's bad stuff. I wish I had brand new bolts. Um, you really want to try to get, you know, threads are like a little valley, and those valleys are full. That's the idea. See, threads are like, uh, like peaks and valleys, and uh, the peaks still look pretty good, but the valleys are all the valleys are all full of. Uh, you know, there should be an, a very distinctive V shape. Maybe we should be able to look down in there, and uh, they're kind of pretty clogged up. Actually, these are three eight sixteen. If I get them half clogged, half cleaned out. And then I find a good 3816 bolt, which I think I have. I can hold this in with a wrench or socket and run that not on and off of these. That, that'll finish cleaning those valleys out. Oh, there's always a there's always a hack. There's always a tip, a trick. Bolt there's always a way.
see what happens is with all that debris on there you say oh that'll be good enough and you you run it in well and the bolt acts half tight because there's interference that debris interferes and the bolt doesn't spin in freely it's kind of going in tight because it's pushing debris trying to there's interference and it's just tighter than it seems to be well you get it in there and it seems like and you say oh it tightens up a little bit more kind of feels like maybe it tightened up when really it didn't tighten up very well half that tightness you're feeling is interference did it really tighten down what it should have yeah you understand that you get that so these uh Well, it's better, but I'm feel I'm gonna feel a whole lot better when I get the when I get some uh, find that three eight sixteen nut and uh, spray some WD forty on there and run that nut on and off of these and uh, then I'll be confident that these go in and will uh, tighten properly. And I don't want this to be a case of I tore something all apart just to remember it was somewhere else. See, I did have to get this extension cord. I did have to turn this back open because I needed the extension cord. Oh, and that's where the Dremel was too. So, that's a Tetris. Same Tetris. Are they in here? No, they're not. Some bolts. Oh, I bet those are metric bolts for the batteries. I bet that's a... Maybe not. No, no, no. They probably are a standard washer. Oh, and the washers. And I just want to know. I just want to find them the first time. The first place I look. Why can't they be the first place I look? Well, they weren't the 38th place I've looked either, um, or the 39th, but look what I found. A brand new bolt. Oh, look at that, it's a brand new bolt. Oh, man, it's a little bit too long. What if I just have two brand new ones? The right size, the right length. But wait a minute. I'm be getting close. What's this? No. No, somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, there's three eighths flat washers. I'm getting warmer. What's that? Old donut casket parts. New donut casket. Good. <gasps> Three eight sixteen bolts. I'm gonna use these as thread chasers. I'm gonna put some WD on that, and I'm gonna run that. Let's see, it goes about. It's got it somewhat clean. It's... Well, yeah, the first couple of threads are okay because that was actually threaded into the engine. But, uh, still, I want to run them on and off. That's uh, just kind of the way I work. I'd be being a little anal about it, but it's just kind of how things run around in my head. Alright, but uh, put that quarter inch fuel barb in that. A quarter inch of fuel filter. There's a thermo lens again. Terminal blocks, gutters, RV gutters. <laughs> I got stuff. Then that gasket. This is my diving into some of my emergency stuff, but the, it kind of is an emergency. Oh, I found a solid 3816. It's a model self locker. Goes on the whole way, but that's not the bolt I'm using. <laughs> All right, let me uh, I'm gonna put this back in the emergency kit. That one too. And that piece too. Never know when you might need a banged up old uh, piece like that. All right, let me see. How am I gonna do this? Let me get this off. This one nut. How many? Oh, I already got one there. What do I got? What do I got? Let's put one away. I'm gonna need uh, one today. <laughs> so, so, what are we gonna do here? Let's use this guy. I probably don't need all that power. I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's put the uh, let's put it on the on position. And then I'm gonna put a bolt in there. And uh, the nut is already laying in the wrench. Let's see here. <laughs> There's my WD-40. Let's uh, we're gonna give this a little uh, squirt. I'm gonna squirt that outside. Hold this outside for just a second. Okay, so let's put it down here. Come on. Don't need much, we'll just go a little, a little squirty squirt. I'm gonna just put it on this uh put it in this knot here. Give it a little Ooh, boy, she's gonna... All right. Oh 
little bit tight halfway up. Ooh, boy, she spun right off. Sometimes it's going to take my... Well, we had it half cleaned out anyway. But, uh... Oh, it went, it went perfectly fine the second time. All right. That could be acceptable. I'm happy that that, uh... Those threads are... 99% 98, uh... Functional again. Where's that other double at? All right, let's get this one. Same thing. We should probably give it a... Give it a little bit of drink. Let's give it a little drinky poo. Oh, yeah, it doesn't take much. That's that's enough. That's enough. That's all you get. That's all you get. Right. You get the same treatment as the first one. On. Ooh. Yeah, about halfway. Snugs up a little bit. Not bad, but. Come on, get on her. Ooh. See what I mean? Second time it goes right up. We chased them threads. We chased the dirt out of them threads. Come on, come on. Come on, don't make a game out of it. You're having too much fun. All right, we got it, two bolts. Now we've come to a very, very critical, critical part um, thing here where uh, many, many thermostat housings where is it okay have been cracked okay many of these have been cracked because of a uh, improper installation of the thermostat itself so um, i'll show you a little trick here um oh we have all everything needed for reassembly uh starting uh with a fresh coffee i needed a, a sip of coffee to uh before i could proceed Fresh hot coffee. Yum. Okay. All right. There's a thing down here. Where's my pencil? You can probably see that. There's a little recess. There's a little recess in here. Let me let me point that out. It's a little bit better. Here's this. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a counter bore. Okay. Is that too bright? Is that light? Is that too much light? There. We can see that better. See this area? This little counter bore down in here. That's where the thermostat is supposed to sit. Now, if it accidentally comes up out of that, and part of it is sitting up on this surface, well, then when you tighten the thermostat the, the housing down, uh, it just creates a high spot in it. Um, they usually always crack or leak. So it's very critical that that thermostat sits down in this little counter bore, okay? So, where is it? Here's a new one. Let's put it in there. Oh, it's like perfect fit there's barely any any side to side play it sits in there really nice it's critical that it stays there all right now in a perfect world uh, which none of us live in uh <laughs> we'd have i would have a tap a 3816 tap and then i could clean these He's uh, well, in the best location in Arby. Let's get over here a little bit better. Let's try to do that. Okay, that'd be good enough. Can we see this hole over here? Okay, okay. A little shadow, a little shadow going on here from the uh, the fuel line I'm going up to the carburetor. The uh, I'd clean, I'd run the tap, 3816 tap in each of those holes and then blow them out with an air compressor. But uh, I'm just going to rely on that uh, clean threads. Uh, we did a 50% uh, better job anyhow. Uh, so anyway, the thermostat is in there and it needs to stay put. Now, I really don't like this, uh, this stuff. I just kind of wish it was a little bit thicker. It's, uh, oh, I guess it is a little bit thick. We're going to lay this down. We're going to put some of this stuff up. I'm going to smear some of this down here. I'm not worried about getting a little bit on top. Of, I don't want to put it too thick. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of sticky. Little sticky goo down there to help hold that thermostat in. Uh, still, you really gotta watch. Even doing this, I gotta. Even after I do this, I'll, oh, oops! Don't get too sloppy, Dave. Don't get too sloppy in and around there. I'm gonna make a mess of this. Um, anyway, I'm gonna reseat that. Let me get some of this smeared around here. I really kind of overdid it there. That was really my bad. Kind of starting to 
feel a little anxious because I'm running late in the day. I was, I got, I caught myself uh, over um, kind of talking with some friends earlier. And uh, instead of working like I should be, I told my buddies, I says, I'm about to turn a, a one hour job into an eight hour job for the amount of socializing I've been doing today. So, uh, as I said before, it's, don't, don't think I'm just always working on my rig and stuff all the time. I, I do more than my share of socializing during the daytime anyway. Alright, so I'm just gonna give that a spin to make sure it uh, stayed put down that little counter more nice. Uh, that's really all that's needed is around that main uh, gasket surface. It doesn't hurt. Uh, I mean, a lot of people do this too. We'll put it out around these two ears. The entire surface that the gasket comes in contact with, it can just help. Uh, doesn't need to seal way out there. Just uh, can kind of help uh, hold the gasket in place. And, uh, so we'll put it around both these ears. And, uh, we got plenty on there. So I guess we're ready for the new uh, the gasket. Let's get that gasket out here. Okay, it's a uh, it's a number thirty five oh sixty two. The uh, big block Chevy takes. And uh, what is this? Uh, what does it say on there? You know what it says? You know what that says? It says uh, AMC 4 151 engine from 1980 to 1983. GM product 4, V6, and V8 from 1935 to 1995. That one gasket carries a lot, <laughs> covers a lot of different vehicles, doesn't it? okay we just needed that last part the uh, Chevrolet V8 1935 1995 we got 1987 uh, product oops product here let's get this in place okay it's looking pretty beautiful to me that's a nice looking gasket I like it I like it now I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna uh, let me sit that there a minute. And, uh, let me get a little bit more of this stuff on my finger. We have a case of silver, silver finger today. And uh, put a big old glob on there like that. And I want to do the same. I'm going to put some some sealer on this. Uh, this aluminum's been wrong. You know how aluminum and uh, moisture can be. It's uh, aluminum can become a little pitted. And uh, uh, pitted. <laughs> we'll just go with pitted it's, uh, and stuff over time with moisture. Well, heck, you've seen aluminum wheels and stuff over a long period of time. A lot of exposure to moisture, especially any chemicals like road salt. You know, it's, uh, you see how what can happen to aluminum over time with moisture. So we're just putting a nice, nice kind of thin coat the whole way around this here with housing. So we got a clean engine uh, surface, some goop, a new gasket, some goop, and uh, the aluminum house. I'm gonna set that on there, and then I'll uh, grab the bolts here. <laughs> okay, I hope we didn't miss anything. <laughs> my, my camera mysteriously shut off, which makes me wonder if we even recorded that last clip. We did have a camera malfunction or a camera operator error. Uh, there's an important part. Uh, we missed the clip. There's an important part of doing that uh, of where I bolted the thermostat housing down. And it's it's worth taking the extra effort if, uh, if you're ever replacing your own thermostat. Um, you didn't have to do the hose work. Put that piece in that hose uh, like I did. Um, I've seen, I mean, actually I've done it. I've learned the hard way. I've unbolted the thermostat housing and, and left the hose on it. And, uh, and this is how these things usually get cracked. Uh, one way is saying, well, the hose really don't have to come off. I can just take the two bolts out and take that off, replace the thermostat, you know, clean the gas, put it back on, put the bolts back in it without taking that hose off. The trouble with that is, that thermostat is not free. It's it's being influenced by the pressure. You know that hose has a it's a preformed hose, and it it has a tendency to want to 
do its own thing. So you, what you end up doing is you're putting that thermostat housing back on, and because the, the hose is usually trying to push it one way or the other, just because of the pressure in the hose, the way it's formed. So you're trying to hold it in place and put the bolts in. Well, that monkeying around trying to hold that, that's usually the action that might cause that thermostat, the, the gasket in the thermostat to slide or, or kick up out of that recess, out of that counter bore. So it's better to have that, um, it's just safer and better to have that thermostat housing just free of any influence that get it's a one hose clamp take that hose off put it to the side and now you just have that thing freely you can just sit that housing down flat on there just like I did that gasket and nothing's trying to push it or pull it this way or that way sit it down on there and yet um, evenly by hand run them two screws down evenly you know snug each one up a little bit you want to kind of do that evenly and tighten a little bit and Tighten them a little bit more, going from one to the other, and, uh, and, and draw that down and tighten it evenly. So, um, and I could have gotten my torque wrench out and looked up the torque specification for a 3816 bolt and, uh, and torqued them down to their proper specification, but I didn't. I, uh, it's, I didn't dig it up. Uh, that would be the right way to do it. Um, many have been done without it. It's, uh, you know, done any t uh, wrench turning, you have a pretty good feel for how tight something is uh, uh, tight. Uh, I used, uh, what I did was, I used an old uh, German u unit of measurement uh, of uh, tightness. It's, uh, the, I think the, the term is, uh, yeah, the German term, uh, tight. okay? <laughs> used to, so we used to, took it to the Gutentight specification, and I, I think that's going to hold up just, just fine, but... Uh, so anyway, we'll get back to the thing there. I, I did put the housing back on, tighten it, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and put the hose on and, and proceed. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens here. That, uh, that's deceiving. That's, uh, that's, uh, so, or, or is it? What kind of stuff is that? I get, boy, again, I wish I had my, uh, my wire, uh, uh, my blast cabinet, my B blast cabinet. I've done that whole surface around there and uh there's a little bit of goo and uh Mara wheeled that at the that's a bit much for the little dremel and uh, uh you have a wire wheel that at the bench grinder six inch wire wheel on it blasted that and stuff but uh i have some of that goop left over maybe i'll put some of that on there i'd hate for that because that's kind of rough so even putting that rubber hose on there and squeezing it down it's it's rough enough it could probably it's possibly leak or seep around there for a little while. It might eventually seal up with some heat and cool cycles, but uh, as soon as I have some of this left over, I don't think there's going to be any harm in doing this. Let's uh, let's put it get a big old let's get a big old uh, let's get some. It doesn't have to be too excessive because it's really just a. Uh, the fact of getting some of this in the uh, think of roughness as the uh, high and low spots so even if you get a thin coat on here it kind of fills in the low spots and, uh, squeezing the rubber kind of does the rest you know, uh, <laughs> it's, this thing ain't gonna leak there ain't no there ain't no way and you know where that's ever gonna leak and the hood should go all the way that little nub there is a stop Actually, hose goes down and hits that, and that's the uh, hey, honey, I'm home. Stop, I've made the whole way. All right, yeah, oops, let's get that little excess off of there. No, I got the I got more gray finger. You need a paper towel. All right, now it's always a good idea to uh, <laughs> find the clamp. I'm going to put the clamp, put the clamp on there first. Okay. And we'll slide the hose on. And out to the uh, little Honey on Home stop. Let's see, where's my, uh, where's my, what you call it? Or the nut driver. Well, this one was a crank way, way out like those 
other ones were earlier. We only had a short way to go, so I don't need the rapid uh, advancement of the cordless drill. Or the uh, impact. It's actually a little impact thing. Well, oh, that's it. So that part's all done, and, and we have that all done. So I guess the, it's not gonna do any good. I'm gonna go ahead and hook the wires up. Uh, now I'm not gonna worry about that a whole lot right now. But the uh, the water system's all back. You know the the hose is all back and everything. And uh, I think it's safe to go ahead and put the antifreeze back in it because you know push come to shove, if we were to need to, to need to leave for some reason, it's uh that's a good stopping point uh, to me. Is the that's together. It's gonna put the uh, coolant back in it, uh, warm it up, check for leaks. Yeah, maybe I missed something stupid. And, uh, that way, the rig's actually usable again at that point. So we'll just go ahead and do that. All right, you can probably hear that terrible exhaust leak down there on the right. It probably sounds like a tapping uh, on the microphone. Because that's uh, down in there. That's why I bought this new exhaust manifold. So I'll, uh, I'll get to that job another time. I want to be prepared. Have everything I need when I do decide to do it. Uh, been running. It's good and warmed up. The uh, thermostat is open, so that pop hose is nice and hot. So it opens up and hot pulls it up over the radiator. Then so it's all circulated. Uh, don't see any leaks down here. That, that looks all nice and dry. No dripping from my other. Uh, no dripping from that up there either. Looking good. Good job. Oh, yeah. All right, that's about it. That's about it for today, anyway. We're going to. I uh, just put the air cleaner back on it, uh, hooked up the, uh, remember to hook up the uh, fresh air uh, to be later thing up there. So what's floating around? It's just stuck on the camera. What's, what's, what's... <laughs> it looked like a hair. I think one of Bella's hairs were floating around. Imagine finding one of those in here. Yeah, it's getting it's getting dark in here. <laughs> turn, turn the light on there. There we go. Does that help? I can barely see you. It's getting dark. Yeah, it's just getting dark back here. Come here, Bella. Come here, girl. Come on, Bella. There you are. There you are. Let's put the camera up here. Yeah, there, 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 there. Hold still. Come here. <laughs> oh. That's all right. We'll get this cover back on here. Yeah, still upcoming. I gotta get that liner in there, and that's coming back off. And you know, gotta mess with that wiring, get that thing wired up the way it's supposed to be. That uh, you know, that thing I just put in there, so the electric fans run operate as they were designed and intended to, not by a toggle switch. So, which that didn't work anyway. So I have to. <laughs> there could be another issue of fuse or something. I'll get all that tracked down and get that uh, get that working right. One thing at a time. Step by step. And keep in mind, a lot of you already know, you know, this thing was just, you know, put off, neglected, and uh, the, a lot of things just <laughs> weren't done quite right. And uh, but uh, the coachman is really, really, really coming along. I you know this seems like it's, this is this never ending thing, but you know, every project, uh, it's, uh, and it's, it feels more like home and the, the conveniences, you know, the new batteries I've put in it, they're doing their job and everything. and. We got plenty of power. Uh, things are just working out really well with the coachman and just down in these little projects that, I mean, it worked like it was, and despite the little leak uh, that needed to fix, but, uh, you know, it wasn't overheating. Uh, you know, it was definitely usable, but it needs something that needed addressed and get it, uh, uh, make it better. Like I said, I don't think I would have drove it, uh, 
it wouldn't have been as usable had it been a hotter time of the year and climbing mountains or towing something and you know had, it would have overheating issues i'm sure because even just light carrying itself in this cooler time of year you know temperature gauge got up uh yeah about like midway and uh maybe a touch more than it should maybe i mean it was in a normal zone but uh um uh, I wouldn't want to do much more to it I, uh, without them fans being functional like they should. Uh, that's for sure. I, I, I knew it wouldn't take much more. But, uh, all in all. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up here. And I'm going to put tools away and get dinner. And uh, we call it a day and uh, resume on it here pretty soon. Oh, what, did I mention earlier um, when I was going to go up to the LTVA? I think I did. Yeah, I'm shooting for the 18th for sure. If I get there a day early... And uh, stay maybe a day over and you know, leave the following day as I wrap things up and put things away. But I think the 18th, I'm going to be there pretty pretty much all day um, for sure. So let's count on that. It's tentatively. Let's, let's we'll plan on that. I, I think that's going to work out here. I'll, I'll have to make it work out or make a last minute this announcement, won't I? <laughs> all right, I'll, uh, we'll be back soon. I'll see you. Give me that stick. Hey, hey, get it, get it. Hey, dude. Hey. How you doing? Good. 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 Is there?